Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to uh, myself and Matt Pippenberg. Um, a lot is happening in the world, Matt, that's for certain. Uh, not unexpected, you know, as I wrote in an article uh, recently, I mean, we've written about it in many different ways, you and I, but I wrote, will this fall be the fall of falls? And, and uh, it looks like uh, the whole world could fall right now with the uh, war starting and, and uh, obviously financial markets being in a mess. But, um, you know, this is why, Matt, we have always talked about risk. Um, not, you know, we, you can't, we can't time markets exactly, but we know that the overhanging risk now is greater than ever. Not only do we have um, the, the debt and excess, excessive spending, uh, inflation, etc., uh, but then, as always happens, you, comes war, uh, and war is part of a debt cycle. Uh, uh, and a war, a war is a convenient way for the masters to actually continue to print unlimited amounts of money and and blame uh, blame the war, and that's what we're going to see now. Um, it's obviously incredible. It, it, sad for the world what's yeah. happening now, and and we don't know where it's going to end. But what what we do know is that the markets are now coinciding with our, our <laughs> view, fundamental long term view that this is sadly going to end badly. Um, and um, you know now I we don't focus too much on technicals, but the technicals were telling us or, or me certainly that stock markets uh, have topped. We're seeing a little correction now, but the next fall could be like the, for example, that uh, the October '87 uh, fall. Mm -hmm. uh, the pattern looks very similar to '87, so we could have a major stock market fall, and that fits into the picture. Mm -hmm. On the other side, gold now, uh, I believe, uh, has bottomed. I mean, we've seen it. Well, I'm talking about the corrective bottom. Still very high gold, of course, especially in, 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 ma in many other currencies than, than the dollar. And, yeah. and I now think that gold is on the way to new highs, mm -hmm. uh, whatever time it takes. Again, this is a, a, as a technical view. Uh, but at the same time, the fundamentals are there. Gold is is now, as we both know, gold gold is massively uh, undervalued uh, and has been unloved. Mm -hmm. uh, sadly, I think it's going to be loved uh, by the world in, in in coming months and years for the simple reason that we will have a lot of uh, uh, unrest in markets. Uh, we will have a, a, a lot of markets which will collapse. Uh, and we and both bond markets, stock markets, etc., property markets, all the bubble asset markets, and people will start moving into gold, as we see that the, the East has been doing uh, for for now, uh, the last few years, uh, and accelerating now. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so, so that's really the, the big picture. And gold, as we know, is is not quite speculative; it's a long term uh, wealth preservation uh, holding uh, that is absolutely required. So that that's uh, the the move that I see coming now, uh, Matt, and, and I think investors should be very careful in staying in their uh, in their conventional assets that have uh, been in bu bubble territory too long. Mm -hmm. Sure. At the same time, so, uh, so, um, at the same time, of course, the oil market uh, will be greatly affected by this. You know, mm -hmm. the continued inflation. Combined with which always happens in uh, in these situations, something uh, a w war in the Middle East, and that could also expand. You know that will affect this, uh, the oil markets dramatically. Um, and um, uh, what what is your view on what's going to happen in that oil market, man? No, it's a very timely question, in particular now. In geopolitics affect oil and oil has an impact on the dollar and that has an impact on gold and they're all related and now we've got an ongoing war in the ukraine and incredibly high tensions in the middle east and in israel uh and without getting into our you know we can't predict the future on how this will be contained in the middle east but there's certainly our ripple effect possibilities in iran and opec and Saudi Arabia that we just don't know yet but what we do know about oil and it all comes back to gold at the end is 
right now is certainly <clears throat> when the when the Biden administration came into power with its green energy deals and trillions spent on trying to get carbon neutral. We haven't made a dent in that, but Biden was effectively, and this isn't partisan, it's just blatant empirical reality, was effectively trying to legislate oil out of the way. When you combine Biden's policies, green green policies, with Powell's higher for longer uh, radical rate hikes in the last 18 months, that's made it harder for oil producers in the Permian and other production parts of the U.S. to make capex costs and produce it at, at a more efficient price. So the, the combination of Biden and Powell has had a massive impact on, on oil, oil production in the U.S., the American Petroleum Institute recently came out with a, a much higher uh, barrel production of uh, 12 million barrels over the last month. That's that's impactful, but not really. Um, the real bottom line is the strategic petroleum reserves in the U.S. are now at 350 million barrels. Like a year ago, it was 650 million. And the, the bare minimum for the U.S. <laughs> before things really crack is 200 million. We're not at the worst case scenario yet, but we, we clearly have a supply and demand problem in U.S. oil. You know, you've got Saudi Arabia and Russia cutting production, but, you know, oil, Brent oil is at 86 as of today's, you know, conversation is really relevant day to day. But, you know, in general, oil has come way off of its lows. Whenever oil gets above 70, that's inflationary. When it's below 70, it's deflationary. Um, but the, the simple truth is China but, right but now. Matt, can, can, can I just add to what you're saying, which we have discussed also many the, the, the major risk for oil is is the Strait of Hormuz, of course. Sure. Uh, with the war in the Middle East, you know, the, if you look at, uh, at a map uh, and look at, at where the Strait of Hormuz is between Dubai and Iran, and that gap is so small, it is so easy for Iran, with the help of Russia, to close that Strait of Hormuz, and that basically eliminates almost 50% of the world's oil, uh, in yeah. high yeah. Four, 40s, I think. That will be a disaster for the world, and that's not impossible uh, yeah. in this scenario that we're looking at now. No, again, we have to be prepared for any and all possibilities, and gosh knows what that will mean for military escalation if such an event takes place. So mm -hmm. the geopolitics are a mess, and you know, as, as, as you're saying, that has a massive impact on the oil price too. In the meantime, we go back to the de-dollarization themes, the slow process of de-dollarization. China has been looking for a way around the petrodollar long before the sanctions. The sanctions increased that. They've saved about 10 billion this year buying oil from sanctioned companies or countries like Iran, Venezuela, and in particular Russia. And I think, you know, the fact that Russia can now sell oil to China in yuan and not dollars, and then Russia can use that Chinese yuan and convert it to gold on the Shanghai exchange. I mean, we're seeing a process of de-dollarization, and that impacts gold near term and longer term, because again, gold is a long-term investment, not a day-to-day -day market swing. But when, when you're seeing China moving away from the dollar, when you're seeing Russia selling oil uh, in yuan and then converting that to gold, what you're seeing though is a slow drip very slow drip away from the petrodollar and the demand for the U.S. dollar through the petrodollar. The fact that Saudi Arabia and UAE are leaning east and not west toward the BRICS countries. Again, this is Ronnie and you and I have talked about since the sanctions began, a slow but irrevocable process now. When there's less demand for the dollar, the dollar gets weaker. And when there's more need for dollar liquidity, that forces central banks like the Fed to print more, which is, again, inherently inflationary debasing currency making the argument for gold that much uh, that much stronger now <clears throat> again this goes back to a theme you began with and i want to return to you because i think it's an important theme it's not meant to be sensational but um when there's less demand for the dollar and there's more need for liquidity one of the great distractions of the world in addition to debasing the currency is going to war creating a wartime economy looking for safe havens in the u.s dollar u.s treasury I'm not saying that the U.S. is deliberately creating a war in the Middle East, but it would be very convenient. And, you know, inflation and war is something we've written about and talked about as co concomitant forces. Hemingway famously said in the 60s, you know, when you've got a debt-soaked nation and political opportunists and their currency is going to be debased when they're living beyond their means in debt. And the two solutions to, uh, you know, to these kind of crises is, is temporary prosperity by debasing the currency and going to war and then ultimately permanent ruin. Now, fast forward 2023, we've got war in the Ukraine. We've got major problems in the Middle East. And the U.S. is already talking about spending more money on military expenditures. So we have war and inflation today. It's no longer a warning. And the question, of course, is that is ultimately tragic for the world. 
sadly, to your point, when gold rises, you know, be careful what you ask for. You have to be prepared. It doesn't mean we like it. Um, but this goes back to that point, uh, Egon, war and inflation. Isn't that exactly where we are in 2023 as of this conversation? Absolutely. Uh, and, and, you know, what is so interesting is I mean, my, my cycle of, of uh, experiencing markets and life is slightly longer than yours, of course. Um, and, and, and my uh, working life started at the very end of the 60s um, and early 70s. And of course, in the early 70s, we had then the, the uh, gold window being closed. Mm -hmm. uh, and since then, the dollar has lost 98% or 99% against gold, which is the only real money. But, you know, we talk about the dollar so often. Remember that currencies is just a relative game. They're all in a race to the bottom. So there's no use talking about holding another currency instead of the dollar or the euro or the, or the Swiss franc or whatever. Um, the only money we're talking about is gold, of course. Uh, so, so don't look at other currencies as an alternative to the the, the dollar, uh, because they're all going down at a, a rapid rate. But you know what's interesting also. So we, we have this cycle that's returning now: the war cycle, the inflation cycle, the gold cycle. And I saw all of that in, in the seventies. I mean, I, I lived in the UK, the higher inflation. My first mortgage was 21% for a while. Uh, there was a Middle East war again, an oil war. Um, and gold went from, from $35 to $850 uh, uh, during that period. Yeah. And we are, ex and it's amazing how history repeats itself, even in the last 50 years. And if you, we can go back thousands of years, it's the same. Um, but few people read history and always think it's different today. Stock markets always go up and property markets always go up. Uh, that is not going to be the case, and sadly, we're going to have a, a lot of surprises. And, and as I, I, we always discussed, Matt, that a lot of our, our, of people we speak to and, and some of our clients, you know, they, they say, "Why isn't gold moving faster?" Most of our clients are wealth preservation clients, so they don't worry about the price. But but some people are, and and you know, we always say. The day that gold really go, goes up, that's not the day uh, that you're going to have the same quality of life as you have now, uh, because a high gold price means a lot of problems in the world, uh, as we are seeing, I have seen, have seen for a long time, inflationary problems, but also now geopolitical problems and, and war. And we don't know uh, where uh, the, the, this war is going to lead to. They could be uh, very, very dangerous for the world. Yeah. All so so you know it really, at least as, as a you know if you want to protect uh, assets um, gold is now and we are not gold bags we're just seeing gold uh, as the consequence of of, of um, horrible management of the world economy and of the world political situation and gold will always reflect that as it has with with st stable purchasing power for thousands of years. But as we see, uh, Matt, everything in life is ephemeral, um, and um, sadly, I, I've had two occasions in the in the la, in the last uh, few days. A, a very very good f f friend uh, yeah. died yesterday, um, and then uh, we also had in in the last few days we had Jim Sinclair, Mister Gold, yeah. uh, who died. Uh, he was a remarkable uh, man who really understood what's happening in the world and the world economy. And I've, I've known him for, for a long time. And he had been very, in the beginning, when, when we started talking about gold, he was very, very po positive and supportive to what we did. And, and therefore, in some yeah. way, helped to put us on, on the map. Uh, and I met him many times, but uh, he died, died a few days ago. So we want to pay, pay tribute to, to Mr. Gold because it, it's... Obviously, sad for him that um, he didn't uh, experience uh, the move that is probably starting now. But maybe, yeah. maybe that was a sign in itself that you know he's done what he can, and now no, it can't. Yeah. So, yeah. so um, yeah. anyway, um, yeah. So we're back, back to gold, and and um, th that is what people should really think about now. If you don't yeah. have gold, or if you don't have enough gold, uh, this is the time to really hold your gold in the right place uh, and and uh, with total control and, and obviously in physical form as we have been writing about as we talk about on our website also. So Matt, 
a, um, a frightening period is coming at the same time. Uh, um, we shouldn't be frightened in life. We should take whatever action we can uh, and then move forward and enjoy every day, um, um, which you know still gives a lot of pleasure to, to many of us. So uh, Matt, a final word from you. Well, I, I echo your sentiments. The personal experiences like the loss of good friends and and, and, and partners in the industry and, and then the geopolitical stresses make us focus more on what really matters. We've always talked about it. It's more than just money. It's obviously the invisible things too. And gold still yeah. matters too, though, as a preparation for us. And this is something you understood decades ago when we set this uh, Matterhorn organization in motion. And remember, for most of our viewers, they are already informed about why they have gold. But as we talked about last week or in the last, excuse me, last uh, interview we did together, it was it's also important to understand not just why you own gold, but where to hold it and how not to hold it. And jurisdictions matter, and certainly Switzerland still remains the best. And uh, staying away from the commercial banks and ETFs, which we talked about, we'll talk about more in the coming months. And we'll, our new website coming out at the end of this year will have a far more easy explanation of this. But what matters is very important. That's invisible. Gold matters in a financial way and as a preparation way, but also how you own your gold and where you own your gold certainly matters. And these are things you understood decades ago as you came out of that moment in history. And so we're just doing the best to prepare for sadly what was expected or an inflation and bad management of the financial system. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, of course, this is a movable feast. And this is a dynamic situation. Nothing is what it was before. Uh, the world isn't as safe as it was. It's more difficult yeah. uh, to to know where <laughs> where and how to hold gold uh, because uh, things change quickly. Uh, but, you know, this is, of course, where people need somebody who can not just advise them uh, what is happening, but also help to shift the gold uh, to a different place if necessary at, at you know, just a, a day's notice. <laughs> Uh, for example, I always worried about the Middle East, and and uh, yeah, I know Dubai is booming, but there is a danger with that, and and you know, hold, holding your reserve asset in 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 the war zone area, dangerous. Of course, there are wars everywhere, but nevertheless, yes, um, and it really has to all the time review uh, how how you hold your gold, where you hold your gold, and and obviously that's yeah. where you need an expert uh, like ourselves. Yeah, Matt. Um, a lot to talk about in the next few months, I'm sure. Yeah. So uh, thank you for this time and thank you to all our viewers um, and see you soon again. All right, Bye -bye. Egan, look forward to it.